Welcome back to Computer Fundamentals. Today we're going to look at assignment uh, 3.02, Unit 8, Assignment 1. Okay, so what you do to get this assignment is you click on Graded Assignment Unit 8, Assignment 1. And what pops up is going to be um, your instructions for this course, I mean for this assignment. What comes up is going to be your instructions for this assignment. Okay, what also comes up, it, uh, you can see that there's a spreadsheet attached to this. So I click on the spreadsheet and download this attachment as well. So you can see it's downloading here. So this is what my spreadsheet looks like. I click Enable Editing so I can work on it. And here's what my uh, graded assignment looks like. So I read my assignment. It says your job is to analyze the sheet and some add some formulas and fix the errors. Uh, there's a lot of information so let's break it down. So the first four columns are the mobsters activity and we're not supposed to change anything in there. The second set of columns um, are the crimes the mobsters committed and the total amount of money involved. And the last set of columns are the different crimes committed and the numbers of times that they were committed and how much money was involved per crime. So it says do not modify anything in the first four columns but you will modify formulas in the other columns. Okay, So the first place we go to is D167. So we'll pull this up. So I'm going to go in my um, cell bar here and I'm going to call it, type in there D167. Click enter. And that should take me down to the cell. Yes, it wants the total there. So I do is I click my backwards three up here, which is my um, auto sum, my auto sum button. I click that, and that'll add marching ants around all the column. Yes, that's good. That's what I want. So I click enter to en to do that formula. Okay, what is the next thing it tells me to do? In the next cell, use the count function to calculate the number of crimes committed. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to count. So I click FX here, I just click it and my wizard comes up. So if count doesn't appear here in your list, just type it in up here, search for a function. Just click on count because it tells you to get a count function. So there, co there comes count, it tells you what's going to happen there. So I click OK and I click OK again. So now I'm going to click in the formula itself to see if, it's, if I have everything there that I want. And I see one, pro one problem and that it, it, it also the, includes the total. I don't want it to include the total so I want it to come up here. So I can either change this 167 to 165 or I can drag up on this, this little dot here on the blue. Well, maybe I'll just change this to 165. Yeah, there it went. See, it just popped up. This is what I'm trying to grab here on the corner. There we go. It finally got the, the two-headed arrow. You got the two-headed arrow, you can drag it down, you can drag it up. That's what I was wait, uh, trying to do. So, you know, or you could change it from 167 to 165. That's all you need to do. So I click the check mark. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, since I got the number of crimes here and the total, I'm going to come up here to the top of the screen again. Okay, and we're going to see what the next directions tell us to do. Analyze and fix any formulas that are wrong. The cells that are yellow are your checker shell cells. 
they go to zero, then you've corrected the errors. You gotta check the following formulas. Check the formulas in cells G3 to G26, from H3 to H26, from K3 to K7, and from L3 to L7, okay? It says a hint here, remember the difference between relative and absolute reference. Remember, a relative um, reference moves relative to where it was before, okay? So when it goes down one, you know, the formula moves down one. It copies it to the next line. Absolute reference stays absolutely still. So the, the relative reference can move, but the absolute reference stays absolutely still. It doesn't move at all. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, when I'm in this formula right here, it tells me that I want to, this is a sum if. The sum if tells me that um, if I find Albert Anastasia in this blue section, then I'm going to add his purple number to this green area. So what's involved in our formula? The blue, the red, and the purple. The red is relative. This is going to go down. First I'm going to look for Albert, then I'm going to look for Anthony, then I'm going to look for Joseph. But this list is going to stay the same. Joseph, Bondino up here, and the 71. This list is not going to change. It's going to stay the same. So you'll see what the problem is. Say if I go down five cells here, I go Joseph Gallo, and I click towards his formula here, and I click in the formula, you see this is not up here. Now, yes, I can go and I can take individually each one of these, and I can correct this, right? I can correct this. Sure, I can. But why go through all that bother when all I have to do is make this one up here a relative reference and copy it, okay? So let me show you how that works. I make this into absolute reference. So I'm going to make the blue column absolute reference. So what I do is in front of the 3, I put a dollar sign. And in front of the 165, I put a dollar sign. All right, the same thing with the purple. I want the purple to stay still. So in front of the three, the D's not gonna change. I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of the three and the dollar sign in front of the 165. Do I bother with the, with the red? No, the red is relative. The red's gonna move, okay? The, and it's down at this column right here, it's gonna move. And now you see what I'm gonna talk about here. I check this and say that formula is okay. Now I'm going to copy drag this formula to all the cells below. So see this um, little green square on the edge of the cell? If I hover over that, it becomes black, doesn't it? I just drag this down, the powerful black cross all the way down. And kazam, just like that, it changes. So now I've got th this changed where the difference is correct. Yay! So now I've got to do the same thing in this column, don't I? So I come up here, and now I'm going to do the same thing with this count if. Okay? So what's this all about? So this count is, if is not a sum if, I, what I'm looking for in a count if is that um, if I find Albert in the list, I'm going to add I'm going to add it to the count. So add it to the number of crimes that Albert committed. Okay. So the blue stays still once again, and the red moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a, a dollar sign in front of the three for the B3, and put a dollar sign in front of the 165 for the B165, okay? So all I do is I click the, green, the check mark. Now I can drag this all the way down. 
See this? Just drag it down. And has that made that turn zero? Yes, it did. Remember the powerful black cross. All it did was copy this formula into the cell below it. Could I have done a copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste? Sure, I could have. But why not use the powerful black cross? Right? When you just drag that down with one fell swoop instead of you know, repetitively, da, 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 right? Okay, now it looks like we got to do it to this one. So I click on the total number of crimes, and this is another count. We're counting bootlegging. So I click this here, and it tells me that, yes, this is going to be relative. We're going to come down through these different things, but I want the blue column to stay in line. So I put a dollar sign in front of the 3 for the C3, and I put a dollar sign in front of the 165 for the C165. The J3 stays the same though, okay? So now all I do is I click this little check mark, and now I take this where my square is here, and that corner is a little black square, the little green square. I hover over it with a powerful black cross and I drag down all the way through. So now my differences are zero. That one's good. So now this is going to be a sum if again. Once again the sum if is, is just it's checking if it if the crime is in this column here in the blue we're going to add the number okay to the sum. We're going to add up the sum for bootlegging. Okay. So what we do once again is we put a dollar sign in front of the 3 and a dollar sign in front of the 165. The J3 is fine. We, we Bootlegging is going to be there, okay? But we're going to change what's in the purple. In front of the 3, we put a dollar sign. And in front of the 165, we put a dollar sign. And I click the green, the check mark here, okay? So now what I do is I copy this formula to the cells below. So I hover over this little green square again until I get the powerful black cross and I drag it down. So now this is, these both are zero, aren't they? So we got to figure out now which mobster made the most money. Now there's several ways to do this. What I suggest, how I suggest you do this, and this is just me, I'm just saying, what I would do is I would go start from Anastasia Albert here, go all the way down like this, grab all three. Then click my sort and filter, and I'm going to choose a custom sort here because I want to sort on, lot, on row H, column H rather. So I want to sort by what? Um, payout, or you know, you can always put H, right? Click OK. So now the person with the most amount of money made the most amount of money is down at the bottom. So I'm going to right click copy over here, right click paste. Which crime had the most number of crimes? Well, all I have to do is check this out. Extortion is the most one, right? So I just type in extortion and I am done. So I come on down, well actually I save my sheet, just double check now, make sure that I've got everything. Yep, I did that, I added them up, I counted, G is correct, H is correct, K is correct, and L is correct, and I've done the two most, I've answered the two questions, so I'm done, I can turn it in. And that is assignment one for Unit 8.